revival is divine visitation. Revival is when God comes. Revival is when the flesh is crucified. Revival is when we are turned back to God. Repentance, confession, when we weep for our sins. Revival is when we cannot live for ourselves but live for Christ. 2021, we will mount up as we as with wings as eagles. Isaiah 40, that one, to me, is a year of revival. Good morning again. This is Bishop George Kichana with word power today. I speak carrying the burden of the Lord. Lord, you need to revive us. We need to understand how you operate and how you work. I am doing what is revival. What is revival? And I read from a scripture that it may open our eyes. Psalm 85, verse number 4 to 7. Turn unto us, O God of salvation, cause your anger towards us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you draw out your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord. Grant unto us salvation. Grant unto us your salvation. I turn to the book of Habakkuk 3, verse number 2. O oh Lord, I have heard your speech, and I was afraid. O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known your wrath, remember, Mercy. What is revival? Revival is a restoration back to God. It's a recovery of what we have lost spiritually. It's being renewed again to love God, to serve God. It's being regenerated, being washed by the blood and the water of the Spirit. Is experiencing in a new bath a powerful revolutionary change. Revival is to be refreshed. Divine wind from heaven coming into us is to face spiritual stimulation. Is when God breathes and he puts new life into us. Revival is impartation of life to those who are dead or to those who are sick. Revival is God's nature, ways and means of extending his kingdom. Revival is a movement of the Holy Spirit that comes and brings about New Testament Christianity and the people discover Christ and the community is turned back to God. Revival is a going of God amidst his people. It's an awareness, a supernatural visitation that is very abnormal. Yes, revival is when the community is engaged with God. Revival is when God's fear lays hold upon the community. Men and women are moved. People who have never had interest in spiritual things, suddenly God comes in. 
In the first and the second great awakening in the U.S., men of God started to preach in meetings. They would speak the word of God in a house fellowship. Then they would move to church. When God was moving, one lady was trying to express something. She was an evangelist. And the hand refused to come back. For 36 hours, that hand remained stretched. 100 miles away, people were running towards that hand. There was a spiritual magnet that attracted the people. People dropped in the streets calling on the mercy of God to be forgiven. People went into a church service on a Sunday. And they did not get back until Tuesday. God came in suddenly. The attention of man was arrested. People remained in the church singing and praying and calling on God. The whole of Sunday, Sunday night, the whole of Monday, the whole of Monday night, they came back to themselves on Tuesday. Will that happen to us? In the most recent meetings here in Eldoret, we went on a prayer convocation. We were doing it in a Baptist church, Uganda Road. And the Holy Spirit came down on people. People spoke in tongues. People were slain by the power of God. Please do not mistake me. I'm not looking for people to be slain. But you know, when God comes in, there are things normally you are not doing, you'll do them. A number of people went on the floor. We finished the service, they did not move. They stayed in the church praying the whole night. Monday morning is when they were asking, where are the others? And they were being told by the watchman, the service ended yesterday. They were caught up with God. May God catch up with you. May God pay a visit. Our schools need the visitation of God. Our institutions of higher learning. Our churches, we are tired of running services for one hour. May God come in, pay us a visit. What has God got to do with the men who are Practicing infidelity, adultery. Young people involved in sexual immoralities, fornication. Young girls having abortions. What has God got to do with the people believe in corruption? They practice corruption. They have nothing to do with God. There is too much that has gone in in our lives and in our nation. We need divine visitation. And if you are watching this program wherever you are, whether in Kenya or outside Kenya, we need a true revival that it begins in the church of God. Then it spills into the world. If the church is not awakened, the society will not be awakened. If the church is dead, we know very well that everything is dead. It will be very normal. We will change rules. We will change regulations. We will go for elections. We will have new elections. We will bring in a new government. We will not see change. Africa back to God. May God revive his work in the midst of the year. May the church be awakened. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, a true revival begins in the church of God. Then it spills over into the world. A time has come we confess how much lies we have told in the church. How we have been compromised. How we have stolen from God. How we have lived double lives. How we have murmured how we have misled the people of God. I sense 
When I read the writings of Charles Haddon Spurgeon, I realize there is something missing in our generation. We have modern technology. We have got organizational systems in place. We can sing using modern gadgets. We have been to school. We are a PhD holders. Yes, we have built some of the most expensive churches. We drive the best of the cars. We have the money. Like one of the churches in the book of Revelation, we are blind. God is not in these things. We know how to preach in one hour. We know how to speak to people psychologically. And we evade sin. We are baptized to sin with a new name. We need revival. Charles Spurgeon said, to be revived is a true blessing to those who have some degree of life. To be revived is like the fire that has died. And somebody has got to remove the ashes and begin to build the fire again. Lord, revive us. Let there be revival. There is a song we used to sing, Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Revive us again. Where are the preachers that preach in tears? Do you see people weeping when the word of God is going forth? I used to see that in the 60s. I remember some of the preachers I encountered. With the passion, they arrested me. I witnessed the preaching of Isaac Hawley from Kaimosi. The guy was apostolic. The man of God was prophetic. He had a word of knowledge. He preached in tears. Our altars are dry. Our pulpits are dead. People come into the church. They watch the drama. They watch how fanciful we can speak. They listen to us preaching with political correctness. The fire of God has been killed. Church leaders, church elders have locked the Holy Spirit out of the church. Jesus is standing at the door knocking. He wants to come in and nobody is opening for him. He's the owner of the church. He's the canon of the church. He's the bishop of the church. The church is dead. There is a little bit of some amber remaining in us. To be revived is a true blessing. When you are touched, you are truly changed. To those who have some degree of life, can the Lord revive you today? When did you hear somebody stand up and say, I have fathered five children and I'm a church leader. I confess my sins. I seek forgiveness and I'm taking responsibility. When did you hear girls stand up in our services and say, I've had four abortions? And I still sing in the choir. Hear this. I was doing meetings in Mumias. And as I was preaching, somebody came up and said, I missed the direction and I went in the wrong way. I slept with a man who was HIV positive. And that individual, under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, said, I have lived a terrible life. I have always trapped men. I've infected very many people. That is sometimes back. This is what revival can do. Others were saying, I live in Nairobi. I am learned. I've got a master's degree. But I'm a very high level wayward woman. My work that I do is to get people's husbands and get money from them. 
That can only be spoken when God has visited his people. And somebody has said, revival is a church word. It has to do with God's people. This is Douglas Brown preaching in Keswick Conventions, 1922. This comes out of the revival meetings that took place in Europe. When the Welsh revival came out, the miners stopped digging coal. Even the animals that were abused in carrying coal, they discovered there was no abuse. Police stations had no case to record. And the policemen put on gloves. They started singing hymns. Over 100,000 people were converted to the church in less than six months. All of the drinking taffens and dens became houses of prayer. Houses which were occupied with prostitutes. The prostitutes got converted and they started to sing songs of God. Those places were turned into Bible study meetings. Children went out into parks and they were preaching. They were talking about Christ. People wept uncontrollably in the streets. Stolen items were returned. Men and women forsook the world. And the policemen had no case. The magistrates were wearing white gloves. There is nothing they were doing. There was no prosecutions. Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. In six months, over 100,000 people were swept into the kingdom of God. Preaching was tears. Songs were sung weepingly. What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's when those songs were written. Take the name of Jesus with you. That's when those songs were written. What a friend we have in Jesus. The wonder of Jesus' name. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. That's when those songs were sung. Songs were not sung for competition. They were not sung for position. They were not sung for fame. They were not sung for money. You will excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Revival. Evan Roberts in 1904 says, my mission is first to the churches. He preached in many churches the whole day, the whole night. When the churches are aroused to their duty, men of the world will be swept into the kingdom. A whole church is on its knees. It is irresistible. Today, our churches are attended by 10 people praying. What a shame. Today, if you manage to gather 50 people, you are doing very well. Our overnights before the COVID came, it was a shame. Even Roberts, an unlearned man, a coal mine digger, received Christ. He said, my mission is first to the churches. I sense our churches need to be revisited. When the churches are aroused to their duty, men of the world will be swept into the kingdom. We need a huge supernatural sweeping of revival. A whole church on its knees is irresistible. What is the revival? 
Revival is divine visitation. Revival is when God comes. Revival is when the flesh is crucified. Revival is when we are turned back to God. Repentance, confession, when we weep for our sins. Revival is when we cannot live for ourselves, but live for Christ. 2021, we will mount up as we, as with wings as eagles. Isaiah 40, that one, to me, is a year of revival. Divine visitation. God coming in our midst. Our daughters confessing of their abortions. Men who are practiced in faithfulness and women turning back to God. People that have stolen from society and the community. Making repentance and returning of the things they have stolen. When our policemen will be clean, speak the truth and live the truth. I know there are a few who are doing that. May God bless you. Revival will reduce convictions. People will not be taken to court. Revival will change our children. They will not die of HIV and AIDS. Drug addictions will drop. Satanism in the land will be drowned into the sea. Are you able to pray, Lord Jesus, forgive me, save me, change me, revive me, restore me. May I recover that which has been taken by Satan, his agents and demons. I'm yours. Revive me. May I mount up like an eagle in 2021. In Jesus' name, Amen. The number on the screen is for you to give an offering support the work of God in Jesus name. My name is Bishop George Michael. Seeking and pleading for revival. Amen. Amen.